All right, welcome to a beautiful day here in Norfolk, Virginia. As you can tell, it's about eh, nice and sunny, no clouds. We're looking at about 65, 70 degrees today. I think it's supposed to be good about 75 for a high. So way better than yesterday than all the rain. So let's get started with these ribs. So the first thing that you uh, that I like to use is a um, charcoal starter chimney. Now you can get these anywhere. This is a Weber brand that I ordered from Amazon. Uh, you can buy them at any hardware store, um, Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace, Taylor's, Insert, wherever. Uh, you can get them pretty much anywhere. They're pretty, pretty inexpensive, anywhere from $15 to $25. Um, what these do is they allow you to start a large batch of charcoal without having to use any kind of chemicals like charcoal starter fluid or any of that because I don't like using that in my smoker because it gets nasty chemical greasiness inside the smoker that I don't want. I want nothing but just burnt wood and more burnt wood and a little bit of meat grease inside my, inside my smoker. I don't want it anywhere else. Um, now in my old grill that I use um, for cooking steaks and stuff like that, I have no problem using charcoal starter fluid. Um, it burns just really quickly and really hot, plus it's just an open grill, so any of the fumes and stuff that's coming off of that are just going to burn off right away. Uh, but I just don't want any of that near my smoke, my expensive smoker. So, uh, what you're going to do with these things here is you're just going to fill the top of them full, all the way full with charcoal. They do come in a couple different uh, models. You can get some that are a little taller, some that are a little wider. And then at the bottom here, it's nice and open, and of course I've got it stuffed with old um, brown paper because we're going to use that as a starter. Okay, so I'm just going to take that and I'm going to set it inside the firebox in my smoker because that is the safest place to have a fire and that's the only place I really want a fire today. And then we're going to get it lit off. If you don't have a torch um, like this or a propane torch or a mad gas torch, that's fine. You can use the old little clicky lighter. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. I find this a little bit more efficient to get it started. So we're going to come down in here. Throw the flame inside there. Just for a little bit. Come up from underneath. And then just for funsies, we'll hit it on this side. And that's all we got. So that paper's gonna burn and then the charcoal will catch on and then because of the chimney nature of this it's going to draw air down to the bottom and it's going to heat up all the charcoal nice and evenly from bottom to top when it's ready to dump in we'll put start putting our wood in and that's it now this is the only time that i'm going to add charcoal to our smoker uh, for the rest of the time once those coals burn out it's just going to be our hickory wood that we keep using uh, each time okay so charcoal is just to get the initial heat as the rest of the wood burns, it creates its own coal bed, and we'll go for, and we use that for the rest of the for the rest of the smoke. All right, so uh, a lot of y'all kept asking me about the smoker itself, so we're going to talk about the smoker a little bit. Okay, this is an Old Country Brazos. Okay, Old Country makes takes, makes two models of their horizontal offset smokers, or what some people like to call a stick burner. The uh, Brazos is their heavy duty quarter inch thick steel model. Okay, it is $1,000 from Academy Sports and Outdoors. Now, that's the only place that you can order them from. Okay, I paid around $1,300 because I had this one shipped from their factory in Beaumont, Texas to here in Norfolk, Virginia, because none of, well, one, Virginia doesn't have any Academy Sports and Outdoor stores, and two, the nearest ones down in North Carolina didn't have any on their floor or to ship. So I ended up ordering this one straight from the factory um, through, through, through Academy. Uh, their other model is called the Pecos, the Old Country Pecos, and it's the exact same setup. It's still all welded all the way through. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful smoker. It's just an exact replica of this. The only difference is it uses 3 16th steel, which is what you find in your average Traeger or Oklahoma Joe's model. Um, and those, of course, follow the same price set of between two and $400. They're great smokers. They're great to start with. They'll last you forever if you take care of them properly. But I, like, I prefer to use the quarter inch thick uh, steel now because it holds heat better, it holds temperature better, it smokes better, everything about it's better. Okay, so as you can see here on this one, the firebox is completely welded on. It's not bolted on, so you're never going to have any leaks coming through right here on it. Inside the firebox, you've got a quarter inch thick steel baffle right here that's also used as an ash pan. Um, I put my fire on it. You can obviously take that out if you want to and put new grates in if you want to and have your smoke or your fire a little bit closer to the bottom, but I like to use this. It came with it, so why not? It also did come with a big, thick, heavy-duty stainless steel grate in here if you wanted to use it for uh, as a grill. 
I don't. I used to use my firebox for grills on my old Oklahoma Joes, and that's a quick way to over, over overheat them and tear them up. So I don't use that anymore. I have a separate grill on the other side of the deck for that. So that grate in here just stays in the garage for whatever. I don't. I'm never going to really need it. Now in the firebox itself, it comes with two grates. They're both again heavy duty stainless steel grates. Uh, the best. That, the thing I love about the firebox is that it has. If you look in here, which we'll actually hear. One of the neat things about this is that the grates actually slide out and can still hold weight and you can completely remove them. But if you look inside the firebox, there's this baffle right here and that forces smoke and hot air down to come up across your meat without actually just some smokers, the heat will just come straight up or the smoke will just come straight up, run across the top and you won't actually get any on your meat. Uh, it also has a top grate in here, which once we start our cook today, I'm actually going to take out. I don't need it today, so it's just going to be kind of in the way our water pan down to where it goes now. A lot of people ask me why do you use a water pan? Well it's completely up to you whether you use one or not. Um, in a horizontal offset smoker like this it's not necessary. Um, however I feel like it helps maintain a more even temperature throughout the fire box or the cook box excuse me and that uh, it kind of just helps keep a little bit more moisture onto your meat without it drying out so much. Um, you're going to have very hot air coming through there. It's going to hit that water. It's going to create a little bit more water vapor in there along with your good clean smoke and just kind of help regulate things out. Again, though, in a horizontal offset like this, especially a big thick one that maintains temperature very well, it's not necessary. It's just a habit I got into back when I was using my old Oklahoma Joes, which of course is thinner steel and a little bit harder to keep temperature. If you're using um, like a Traeger or a, a Big Green Egg or any of those, um, or a Kikoman or any of those other brands of, of vertical smokers, though, a water pan is absolutely necessary. If you don't use a water pan in a vertical smoker, you are going to burn your meat every time. So there's that. Um, the door itself is, of course, also with quarter inch steel, so it's nice and heavy. Um, I did, however, put a gasket on here, just a cheap little gasket that I got from Amazon uh, to keep any smoke from getting out of the cook box that doesn't go across the meat. Um, I've seen uh, $1,000 smokers do it. I've seen $10,000 smokers still leak because that metal to metal contact just doesn't stop all the smoke. So a little felt gasket is almost necessary in almost any smoker that you get, especially a horizontal offset. And then the biggest thing I love about this one is this smokestack. The smokestack itself is really big. You can almost fit your whole head down in that thing. It's huge. Um, it's almost twice the size as you see on your, like your average Oklahoma Joe's or something like that. This short fat smokestack to me, draws air faster and better across the cook chamber and draws air into your fire pit faster and better and more efficient uh, coming through. So I like it a little bit better uh, than some of the skinnier and taller ones. Uh, it's kind of just your choice and preference and how you think it works. One of the other bonuses to this one is that it's also great level. It's not coming out of the top of the, fire, uh, the cook chamber. It's great level, so it's drawing your smoke across your food and not across the very top of the cook chamber got a nice wonderful heavy duty storage down here for all your extra wood. Uh, we do have a wood pile that I have in the back other side of the backyard that I keep all of our firewood at and I just pull over what I think I'm going to use for that day for the cook here. Um, and then I'll just kind of split it up and make them a little smaller as I go with my little hatchet. It's also got a nice heavy duty shelf right here. Um, it is held up with just a very thick, about a half inch thick steel bar. Nice and solid. I can put it just about anything on there it's going to hold. And if I need to drop it real quick, it drops real quick. So that is my old country bronzo smoker that uh, our wonderful cameraman got me for my birthday this year. And uh, I think this is going to probably be the only smoker I have for many, many years. We're heating up. I can start to see a little bit of red down there in the coals. Still going to take about another 20 minutes or so before these are ready. Now, one of the things that I want to mention, if you're going to heat up coals like this in your firebox, we've talked about before about having nice, clean smoke. Well, right now, while your charcoal is getting hot, it's dirty, nasty, icky smoke, right? This is open. This is open. My baffle's open on the side. My smokestack's open. Everything's open because I don't want any of this nasty shit coming off of this charcoal going into my cook chamber. I get it. We're not going to use it yet. We still got probably an hour before I'm going to put the meat on, but I just don't want all this nasty shit getting into my smoker. So, all right, that's it. And uh, see you guys in probably about an hour when we get ready to throw all this on. So we are ready to trim these up and uh, get them seasoned up and, and on the smoker. 
So I've been running about 300 to 350 just to get the initial heat through the smoker. Um, all that is is just so that the, uh, the quarter inch steel will actually hold it a little bit better whenever it cools down. Now that it's settled back down, we've got a good clean smoke going through. I'm going to try to keep the temperature now between 225 and 250 throughout the rest of the cook. Okay. So, uh, first thing I want to do with each set of ribs, uh, you're going to have a little bit of wind noise about that. It's nice out here, sorry. All right, we want to trim them a little bit, okay? Now, little tiny pieces like this, not a huge deal. However, they are they there is a possibility that they might burn. So you want to trim little stuff like that off. Really didn't need to touch that one. But what I do want to do is when you get to the end of your ribs, you'll see here where we've got a bone fragment. It's not a full bone right here. It's only about two inches long. So, and the meat's pretty thin on here on the end. That's more than likely going to burn. So I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and just trim that off and we'll save this and use it later for something like sausage or whatever. Okay. Any kind of thin little portions of the meat will knock off and that's all we're going to do. So now the next thing that people want to talk about sometimes is what to do with the membrane on the back of the ribs. Okay. There's three things that people do. One is they just leave the membrane on Two they score the membrane, or three, they just remove it completely. Removing it completely is kind of a pain in the butt, and there's really no true benefit to doing it. So I score it. The reason for it is so that you get little one inch squares on the back of it. So I'm just gonna basically score in between each bone, just like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, just get, get the membrane through. And then we're gonna come across horizontally that way, as the fat on the back of the rib starts to render, the membrane allows more smoke through, allows a little bit more heat through, and when you take a bite, you're not getting a big mouthful of membrane that you might pull off of the ribs. You're just going to get maybe a little tiny square. In most cases, if you cook it properly, that little slice of membrane right there is going to just render up and fall off anyway, and you're not going to have to worry about it. So let's real quickly go through these next two racks. All right, same thing I use on just about everything, 50-50 salt and pepper. This is half kosher salt and half coarse ground black pepper. I use kosher salt because it's about the same size as the black pepper ground. That way it gets a nice even coating and, uh, and I just kind of make this up myself, 50-50 by volume. Okay, now it is very easy to over salt ribs because the meat is so thin. So what I like to do is sprinkle it on until you see about that consistency of the pepper. Nice and evenly coated, and then you don't have to worry about over salting. If you got too much black pepper on there, then you're obviously putting too much salt. Okay, we're going to go ahead and flip it over and rub both sides of it. Set that out of the way. Me personally, like I said, I like to only just use salt and pepper because salt, pepper, and smoke are the only two things. You'll, you'll see me say it on, online sometimes. SPS, S and P and S, salt and pepper and smoke is the only thing I want on my meat. So, all right, these are ready to go in. So let me go ahead and get this opened up, get it cooled down a little bit. I did have a couple of pieces of wood in there just kind of preheating. They can sit, they can sit on top of the firebox to preheat now. Show you a little use for the tactical apron. Them. And I'm going to put a membrane side down on the rack just like this. They fit perfectly on the rack. I can actually use the uh, the pull. Actually, nope, that's nice and hot. Not going to do that. 
was going to pull out the rack and use that feature of it, but I don't have my cotton thermal gloves on the bottom of these right now, so uh, the rack's a little hot. All right, and that's it. We're going to let them sit and smoke. Like I said, we're going to stay between 225 and 250 for about three hours and then we'll start to we'll come back here and we'll check the color on them and see if we need to start spraying or doing any of that all right so it's been about three and a half a little bit over hours since we put the uh the ribs onto the smoker uh we've been running clean i uh, just put a new log on there so we're going to get a little bit of gross smoke for just a second but that's all right we're about to open it up anyway so uh the first thing we're going to probably start doing is start spraying now uh, there's a reason why i start spraying we'll go into that here in just a minute but what you may have noticed is uh the smoker is not where it was in the earlier videos. Okay, earlier, um, I had it facing this way, which, which the way the house runs is uh, this is north and south, that way being north, this way being east and west, right? Well, I had the smoker sitting here and I didn't really pay too much attention to it, but as the wind was coming through and hitting the trees coming from the west and then as it circles down, we started getting really strong winds going this way from north to south, which is pretty common for the yard. Um, what that was doing is, is it was causing my firebox to get a draft right in front of it and it was literally sucking all of the heat and smoke out of my firebox and none of it was going into my cook chamber um i couldn't get temperatures up i spent about an hour fighting it i couldn't get the fire to stay lit i couldn't i couldn't figure out what was going on until finally i just kind of carefully moved the smoker just a little bit to kind of get a little wind in it and all of a sudden it got fixed which there's no real safe way to do it but we very carefully moved the mats and moved a 500 pound smoker 90 degrees and now that the wind's been shooting straight into the firebox i've had no problems keeping the temperature and we've been burning clean clean the whole time uh, i do have a little bit of wet wood here that is causing a little bit of a nasty smoke but that's okay we've been clean for most of the time and as you can see coming out of the firebox we've got pretty good clean smoke on it too so that's fine so let's go ahead and take a look at our ribs and we'll go on from there all right so that's three and a half hours Went ahead and gave them a little bit of extra time just because of the cold temperatures at first. Look at that. Almost don't even need to wrap them. They're so tender, they're starting to break apart. Now you can see we have a little bit of uh, a little bit of plumping and pullback on the bones already. Now that tells me that we've got a little bit of a hot spot right here in the smoker. Same thing with right about back here. So I think what I might do is before we start spraying is I'm going to turn all these ribs 180 degrees so that we can start getting a little bit more pullback on the bones. Beautiful red color, still nice and juicy and glistening. So we're gonna go ahead and spray. All right, not enough to wash off the pepper, but just enough to get it wet again. And then we'll get back to cooking. Now, a couple things. Back when we did the brisket videos, uh, a couple of people, especially some of you South Texas boys, were like, why are you spraying your brisket? You can't be doing that. Well, there's a reason why I'm spraying my barbecue, okay? Yes, we're still doing kind of a Texas-style cooking with, um, uh, with just salt and pepper and smoke, but at the same time, if you don't try to change up your methods a little bit, if you don't try to improve your craft, then why even do the craft? Uh, there's a couple of reasons why I do the, uh, the spraying the way I do. Okay, like I said before, what we have here is this is half cheap beer and half apple cider vinegar. Um, what that gives me is it gives me a handful of things, including three different methods of cooling, okay? The, what you get, of course, with the beer in it, you have, uh, which is five, well, roughly 5% 5 alcohol for the beer, you get uh, a boiling point of about 173 degrees Fahrenheit. What that gives me now is very low temperature evaporative cooling on the meat. So now I can run my temperature back up to 225, 250, maybe even go closer to 275 for this next little bit. To start getting that pullback from the bones with the meat. Um, the next layer of cooling that you get of course is the water which is both in the beer and in the vinegar and uh, water of course we know boils at 212 degrees so now we have mid-range long-range cooling that goes on on the surface of the meat. It's no different than just your sweat evaporating off of your skin to cool you off. And then the vinegar gives me two things. The vinegar one it also gives me long-range high temperature cooling because the acetic acid that's in the vinegar has a boiling point of about 244 degrees. So we've got that high temperature cooling and then it also gives us a little bit of a, of just a fruity, tangy little bit flavor to the bark of the meat 
uh, just because of the apple side of this in the vinegar. But since there's no sugar in the vinegar, it's not going to give us any charring or burning. So that's it. We're going to continue to keep this. I'm going to go ahead and push it up to probably about 250 to 275 now. Um, just so that we can get a little bit of meat pulled back. I'm going to continue to spray every 20 minutes now until we're ready to wrap. We'll be ready to wrap when I know that we've pulled away from the bones good and we already seen that the meat's nice and tender. I'm not worried about that. Uh, today we're wrapping in tin foil, not butcher paper, and I'm not adding anything to it like lard or tallow or any of that. So see you guys in probably about an hour to hour and a half and we'll wrap these up and then get them to finish cooking. All right guys, so we're ready to wrap. However, comma, I'm calling an audible on myself. It's my house, it's my smoker, it's my yard. I'm allowed to call an audible. I am going to change it up. I said earlier that we were going to go ahead and use the, uh, uh, the tin foil instead of the butcher paper. However, as we were filming the last video, my lard came in. Okay, I've been waiting on this. It's from the South Chicago packing plant, same place I get the YQ beef tallow. So what I wanted to do is I poured, I, I took a little bit out. Of course, it's just in a uh, soft soft white consistency just like everything else or just like the beef tallow uh, I took, took a little bit out put it in a pan and let it grab smoke for about an hour now I am gonna kind of wish I'd gotten about six to six hours of smoke on it like I did with the uh, with everything else but that's fine it's okay it's got a little bit of smoke on it you'll see some color on it here in a little bit and we're gonna treat these sort of the same way that we did with the brisket the only difference is that it's not a semi-solid right now it's a liquid so we're just gonna kind of pour it on the ribs it'll be okay. I'm hoping that it's going to be a little bit more juicy. It's going to absorb into the ribs when we're getting back up to temp a little bit and let them rest and it uh, should be good. So we're going to go ahead, open this up. We've been rolling at 275 the rest of the time. So now if you look, come closely, you can leave that there. We're starting to get good pullback on all of the bones now. A little bit of plump back here on this hot spot. This rack's perfect. I kind of, now that I know that when I do ribs, I need to rotate them out and get all of them into this spot for a little while so i'll probably rotate them a little bit more often but we're going to go ahead and pull them out we've got nice and nice and tender they're breaking apart if you look on the back side we've got just a little bit of crunchy and that's what i'm hoping that this lard is going to help kind of take care of and then we'll wrap them up so let's see what we got okay i've uh, got a little bit of that lard right here that's been absorbing smoke for about an hour it's not near as dark as I want it to be. Like I said, I would like to get about a good six hour smoke onto it, but that's fine. We're gonna roll it just like that. Now at this point, we're done absorbing smoke, just like the brisket we did. All we're doing now is heat. Heat, and we're gonna let that lard. I'm gonna rotate these around a little bit too. Just to make sure we have a nice even temperature all the way through. We're gonna let that lard soak in. Grab this guy. lard now the whole purpose of this lard one is to bring a little bit more smoke flavor into the meat two it's going to soften up the bark on the outside of it and three if you've ever grown up especially those of you who grew up in the south where your mom or your dad made fried eggs they made them in the leftover bacon fat. Those were probably the best eggs you've ever had in your life. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here, is I'm just heating these up, getting them to final temperature where they're nice and soft, in rendered bacon fat. That's all that is. The only difference is between this and the regular bacon fat that you would normally get, you know, if you made it yourself, fried some bacon, is you're not going to get all the salt and... Uh, and additives that would be in store-bought bacon that you get left over in your grease. This is just plain, unadulterated pork lard with a little bit of smoke flavor in it now. So 
these should be, when it's all said and done, probably the greatest ribs I've ever made. We'll find out. So I'm going to wrap these up and give them about an hour. And that should, and I'm going to go ahead and drop the temperature back down to uh, uh, between 225 and 250. And that should get us up to temperature. We, of course, we want 200 degrees on the thickest parts of the meat. 200 degrees on the thickest parts of the meat. And, uh, and then we'll let them rest for about 30 to 45 minutes inside, maybe about an hour, just get them down to a good eating temperature and we'll serve them. So see y'all in a little while. All right, cool. So we're done. Uh, we've got it. We had them wrapped up, uh, kept them at 225 to uh, 250 for the last hour and a half. Uh, we've got a guest you know, guest here, so uh, his dog's barking in the background, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, I let him rest in here for about 45 minutes to let him get down to a little bit more edible temperature. Uh, got some beans and some bread on, so we're about ready to eat dinner here. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. They're nice and tender. They're about, they're actually just breaking apart in my hand, right? The bottom side, even though it's nice and black, everything's nice and soft and squishy, all the fat's rendered. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these open, and uh, since we have a guest here, uh, Nick, if you wanna come over this way, you are going to get the very first rib. I'm gonna cut right out of the middle here. And we're gonna take a look at this guy. So the smoke pretty much went all the way through to the bone. It's nice and clean. I actually cut a little bit off center there on that one, but uh, here you go, bud. Tell me what you think about that. Very good. good. Very smoky. Good. Very smoky. Awesome. So yeah, the uh, the pork lard. I'm glad we went with that that route because uh, that's what we're probably going to stick with from now on. And probably never going to make ribs any other way. Let me go ahead and get a little bite for myself. Oh yeah, comes right off the bone. Mm -hmm. Super smoky. You can taste that smoked pork lard in it. Just salt, pepper, smoke. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're doing these from now on. So, see you guys in a couple weeks. I'm not going to do anything um, next weekend just because I'm, I'm busy with work. Hopefully in about two weeks, though, we'll do a uh, smoked pork butt and do some pulled pork. So, y'all have a good one. Thanks for watching.